from one power company to another, uh, outstanding performance coming in from Tata Power, strong set uh, in the second quarter, well above street estimates. Uh, it, the company has clocked in a sharp improvement in the Indonesian coal mines as well. EPC margins have done well. Disco earnings have done well. Joining us now is Mr. Praveen Sinha, Managing Director and CEO of Tata Power. Uh, good morning, Mr. Sinha. I mean, I rattled off all the uh, brilliant performances, but let me start with one that's obviously not done well, which is margins, and uh, I guess that's because of coal cost. Can you give us an idea of how margins might pan out for the second half? Uh, good morning, Lata, and first of all, happy Diwali to you, you. and all the viewers. Uh, I think um, uh, you rightly mentioned the uh, revenues have gone up, EBITDA has gone up, BAT has gone up. And uh, there has been some pressure on the margins, uh, primarily because some of our EPC projects, uh, which uh, we were anticipating to close during oh. the quarter, we could not do. Uh, we expect uh, that uh, now we will be able to close it in Q3 and Q4 and uh, ramp up our margins in EPC projects. Also, some of the cleaning up that we are doing up uh, in our distribution business, especially in the Odisha Discom. Uh, all those uh, results will start coming in mm. the subsequent quarter. So there's a lot of cleanup that we've done. Uh, we've changed meters. The collection has improved. Uh, but uh, many of them uh, are still work in progress, and uh, we will start seeing the benefit of it. Uh, our rooftop business, again, uh, uh, there were supply chain issues. Uh, margins were impacted in the first quarter and second quarter. Uh, but uh, subsequent orders that we have got are very good orders. We've got a great order uh, backlog and uh, which we will execute. So I think uh, uh, what uh, we need to see is in terms of what are the foundations of the company mm. and uh, directionally where we are going. And if you have seen, uh, this is the 12th consecutive quarter of uh, growth in mm. fat. Uh, and we are only improving every quarter and uh, improving our performance. So I think uh, we are in a very good uh, um, we have a very good momentum and very good track and we'll be only improving from what we have been doing in the past. Can you uh, tell us about the Mundra, uh, you know, legal position? Uh, you're able to collect uh, extra costs, but it looks like it's a temporary, uh, uh, you know, uh, SOP. When are you expecting that it will be, you know, full and proper? So I think uh, Mundra, the, uh, some of the issues have been decided in the interim order from CRC yes. and the final order is awaited in uh, November. And I think uh, whatever gets decided, especially in terms of the cost pass through for coal and, uh, uh, and the fixed cost and the capacity charge, uh, all that will become the future uh, baseline for which uh, the uh, supply will take place. So mm -hmm. this is the reality which uh, uh, will get established uh, going forward. And uh, since it's decided by the regulator, yes. uh, it will get implemented and accepted. But the interim is a full cost pass through? Uh, right now, uh, uh, they have said that, but mm -hmm. we are waiting for the final order okay. and uh, we will uh, get to see what is the final arrangement approved by oh. the regulator. Okay, all right. Mr. Sena, you know, since you touched upon Mundra, let's focus on that. What's the under-recovery from the Mundra unit? What was the loss that was booked in the last quarter? Mm -hmm. And if you could give us a timeline, when do you expect the CERC to revert back on that section 11? Uh, I, I think CRC has already heard the matter and yes. uh, it is reserved for order. So I do expect that in the next uh, four to six weeks, we will get the order. Uh, and uh, uh, right now, there is a difference between what was the interim tariff, which was notified by Ministry of Power, and what is the actual cost. Uh, and uh, once that gets determined by CRC, that will be the way uh, future transactions also will happen with all the beneficiaries. Because uh, mind you that uh, Mundra continues to be one of the low-cost producers and continues to be one of the biggest suppliers of electricity. Uh, to Gujarat and some of the other states also. So uh, the necessity of Mundra is there and with the type of increase in demand that we are seeing uh, in our sector, uh, this will continue to supply uh, reliable and uh, efficient power to all consumers in future. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Sena, can you give us uh, some perspective on the EPC? You said some orders that you expected you would book could not be booked in second quarter. Uh, give us a 360-degree perspective. How much are you expecting by way of revenue there? 
and how much uh, in terms of margins? What's the order book looking like for the future? So uh, just to give you an idea that uh, the steel prices and the other commodity prices had gone up uh, in uh, the last, uh, I would say, about a year. Uh, they have come down by nearly 25% in the last quarter. And we have now gone and booked all our re uh, requirement okay. of steel, copper, aluminum for the coming year. So the uh, impact is 25% uh, saving in the cost of uh, steel items and, and the other commodities. Similarly, the, uh, the module prices which we mm. were importing from China had gone up to 26, 27 cents. It has now come down to 23 cents. And we expect that in the next few months, it will come down to 20, 21 cents level. So that's the upside that we will get. Mm. So what we did, instead of uh, uh, mm. doing all these projects in the first and second quarter, we have deferred it. And we have also taken up with the government of India, which has agreed, and also the beneficiary, that you can stagger the implementation of it. Uh, and uh, that, I think, will help us to complete these projects in the next two quarters okay. and take the benefit of higher margin. Right. Uh, you know, just wanted to understand a couple of things. Since you said that uh, Orissa will now start reflecting in terms of better performance from here on, uh, uh, I, I see the distribution losses out there have reduced by about 500 basis points. Going forward, how much better can they get from here on? And uh, the second one is with regards to the renewable energy, your uh, you know EV business. How big uh, will that be, say, uh, the next couple of quarters before we talk about your long-term targets there? So, Odisha, we have done a large-scale uh, cleaning up in terms of there were a large number of meters which were not working or were legacy meters, electromechanical meters. Okay. We've changed nearly uh, 20 lakh meters out of the seven, out of the 90 lakh meters. And uh, that has helped us to bring down the provisional billing, which used to be something like 40% to average of 20%. In some cases, it has gone down to 10%. And we expect that the 500, uh, 500 basis point reduction, a similar uh, amount reduction will happen in the next quarter. So we really expect that the full benefit mm. of uh, Odisha Discom so will start coming in the subsequent quarter. And, and uh, in FY24, you will see a substantially mm. better results uh, coming out of Odisha. Mm. Uh, similarly, in, uh, uh, in uh, our EV and other businesses, where again, uh, traction of uh, electric vehicles has not been so much, uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, it has increased from a base number. Uh, once the uh, penetration of electric vehicle takes place and utilization of these charges takes place, I think uh, we will uh, still uh, we will see huge improvement in the margins also of our EV charger. Of course, uh, in our home chargers and uh, public transportation for buses, uh, it has done well. But uh, in the public chargers, uh, we still have to see the type of usage that uh, will make them uh, self-sustainable. Okay, um, Sina, for the benefit of uh, investors who are watching you, some numbers. Uh, what is the breakup in terms of revenue? How much comes from thermal, how much renewable, and uh, how much from your EPC and DISCOM uh, businesses? And if you can give a, a rate of growth for each of them, whatever you can so perceive think, in the second half. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, earlier, traditionally, we were uh, one third each in our transmission distribution, uh, conventional generation, and in our, uh, uh, in our renewable business. Now it is moving more towards uh, our D&D business and renewable business. So what we are seeing is uh, our renewable business and uh, our D&D will become about 40% each and our uh, thermal and hydro will be about 20%. So that's the type of change that we are going to see. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen that uh, in two quarters, our revenue has become nearly uh, 28,000 crores. Uh, if you remember a few years back, our annual revenue used to be 28, 29,000 crores. And, and that's the type of trend change that we are seeing. And this is primarily happening because of uh, the huge uh, renewable focus and the huge focus on distribution and transmission. Okay. So going forward, you will see that sort of trend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have shared the numbers in terms of uh, long-term projections and I think we are committed to those numbers. Okay, all right. Mr. Sena, very quickly, you know, you all had plans to quadruple the net profit. 
in FY27 if you compare it with FY22. Now, you've given us a brief idea about the segment performance and how things are going to work out. What is there in this assumption? Do you assume that Mundra will turn around? And do you think that this coal profitability that you're seeing, which is, I, I don't know whether it's a one-off or so, but it's looking very, very alarming, do you think it will remain the same for the next few years? Uh, I don't think uh, coal will remain the same for yes. coming years. And in our projections that we had given that we will make it four times the profit, yes. we have considered a very muted coal uh, uh, impact. So it's not that uh, we have considered the present impact of coal. Uh, we have definitely considered that Mundra resolution will happen uh, partly on the lines that what we are expecting from yes. CRC. Yeah. So the, that has been considered, but we are definitely expecting uh, a huge growth in our renewable business and in our TND business. Yes. So uh, if you see uh, again, uh, we had uh, last year we had a profit of something like 2200 crores in two quarters. We've already done 1800 crores, mm. and this is much more than what we traditionally used to do for many years, where we were about yes. 1200. So I think we are very much on track to uh, make it four times four time. our profit. Oh. Fair. And I think we will deliver on that. So All right. Take that point, Mr. Sinha. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Wish you good luck uh, for the coming quarters. Also, once again, uh, season's greetings to you and your team. Uh, that is the management of Tata Power. The next four to six weeks, crucial, because that is when we will hear uh, any sort of commentary coming in from the CERC on the Mundra issue. With that, we take a short break. On the other side, we have the management of SPI Card joining us to detail their second quarter earnings, uh, an important one. Stay tuned. We'll also be joined by...